research project uh, focuses on women who work as erotic dancers um, in the 19th century. And what I'm particularly interested in is the ways in which those undressed bodies produce particular kinds of meanings, the ways in which we read them. Class and race come into play, so that what we start to see around the middle of the 19th century is quite a lot of middle-class white women who take up this work of erotic dance. They represent ideas of femininity kind of hyperbolically or more clearly than might otherwise be evident. It's one of the reasons why I don't like to use the, the, the term exotic, um, because it suggests that they're somehow outside of the ordinary run of femininity, when in fact what they're doing is they're actually performing really quite conventional ideas of femininity in that imperial context. There are a lot of photographs and a lot of postcards, so there's a really clear indication that towards the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th, when those postcards begin, begin to circulate, that women are um, kind of collecting them and, um, and copying them, right? copying the costumes and the poses and the um, attitudes of women who are working as erotic dancers. It can't be in any way accidental that erotic dance emerges as a business and a, and a cultural practice in the middle of the 19th century at you know, the same time that, um, that the figure of the mother of the race starts to become a, a prominent figure in popular culture and when eugenics starts to take shape and when people start to panic about white slavery and when women you know, are increasingly reminded that their, their duty and their biological destiny and their role in the world is, is to have babies. Dancers have a really interesting relationship to that particular representation because they so hyperbolically um, affirm the construction of women as reproductive bodies.